Switzerland. Professor Haber is senior consultant in pediatric anesthesia and is head of the unit of anesthesiological investigations at Geneva University Hospital. Professor Harp's main research activity is focused on the anesthesia management of children with bronchial hyperresponsiveness. He has developed a particular research interest on lung function and heart-lung interaction, uh, leading to more than 170 publications. Additional research focuses on quality improvement projects in pediatric anesthesia. Dr. Harp has just completed a 10-year term as deputy editor of the European Journal of Anesthesia. And today he is going to give a lecture on a very complex topic, which is heart-lung interaction in congenital cardiac anesthesia. Thank you very much, Dr. Harp. Thank you very much, Mona, and thank you for asking me to participate in this very challenging webinar about uh, uh, early extubation and fast-track postoperative care. Um, I don't have any conflict uh, to disclose. The, the thing is that it's so complex that uh, within 10, 25 minutes, I probably will talk and will, you will notice that I will focus more on the postoperative care and the heart-lung interaction in the postoperative care mostly. I'm going to talk firstly about the basis of what we're talking, heart-lung interaction. Uh, second step, I will uh, try to give you some hints about how to anticipate and reduce the ventilation perfusion mismatch in order to allow early Intubation, and finally give you some tips uh, weaning from the ventilator. First of all, and you know uh, that the heart is a pressure chamber within a pressure chamber. So under normal conditions, even with normal lungs, normal heart, the uh, spontaneous inspiratory efforts will decrease actually uh, the intrathoracic pressure. Here, intra decrease the pleural pressure, and that will increase the venous return increase the right ventricular uh, preload and will, um, during inspiration, decrease left ventricular preload, but during uh, expiration will increase it. Uh, conversely, during mechanical ventilation, what you have here is an increase in pleural pressure, and that will have the opposite effects with the decrease in uh, uh, venous return and the decrease in right ventricular stroke volume, but will eventually uh, actually uh, facilitate somehow uh, the um, uh, uh, by unloading the left ventricular uh, ejection. In fact, it's more complex than this, and one should not neglect the interaction between the vas pulmonary vasculature and the lung and the alveolar pressure. For instance, when you apply a positive pressure ventilation with PEEP or you use large tidal volume, what you do is actually increase pulmonary vascular resistance, increasing afterload of the right ventricle, and that will, uh, with the, due to the interdependence between the right and uh, left ventricle, you'll have this mechanical interdependence that will shift the left uh, septum towards the left and that will decrease the left ventricular and diastolic vent uh, volume and decrease the stroke volume. And you also should not neglect the indirect effect due to the uh, various regulatory mechanism with the mediators and neuronal control that makes that any abrupt change in lung hemodynamics will have change in the mechanical properties of the lungs and vice versa. One important thing here, you have a model of the uh, respiratory system. And here in red, you have the, um, uh, the distending forces. And one of the most important force is the transpulmonary pressure. The transpulmonary pressure is the pressure needed to inflate the lung. And that is the transpulmonary pressure is the one that will define the hemodynamic changes that you will observe uh, particularly in uh, children with the congenital heart disease. Uh, the uh, thing is that when you increase intrathoracic pressure, you will decrease the pressure gradient for venous return, which is the gradient between uh, what's the mean systemic filling pressure and the right atrium pressure, and that will decrease the venous return. Uh, conversely, decreasing intrathoracic pressure like during spontaneous ventilation that will increase the pressure gradient for venous return and left ventricular ejection. So let's uh, make it simple. There are four main mechanisms that uh, summarize somehow the heart-lung interaction. 
When you increase pleural pressure, what you have a decrease in right ventricular preload that will lead to a decrease in right ventricular ejection and eventually will lead to left ventricular preload and left ventricular ejection. Conversely, when you increase transpulmonary pressure, you will increase right ventricular after afterload, but you do decrease left ventricular uh, uh, afterload, improving somehow the left ventricular ejection and will increase the left ventricular preload. This is what you observe usually during systole, uh, during inspiration or expiration during mechanical ventilation with the maximum of the systolic pressure at the end of the inspiratory period and the minimum during the expiratory period. The other thing that you need to understand is that there is normally a cyclic blood volume redistribution between inspiration and expiration in the lung. And that will vary between non-dependent and dependent uh, part of the lung. Here you have images obtained during inspiration and expiration at different peep levels and different tidal volumes with the synchrotron imaging, high resolution imaging using both uh, iodine and xenon to look at the ventilation and perfusion. And you can see here that uh, this cycling uh, blood volume distribution content in the lung varies depending on the PEEP and the more PEEP you increase, the uh, um, the lowest uh, um, blood, the, or the most blood distribution is in the lung and the highest tidal volume you use, you also have an effect, a significant effect on the blood redistribution. When dealing with the cardiac surgery, you have two effects. You have effect of cardiac surgery on the heart and you have to have the effect of the uh, uh, cardiopulmonary bypass on the lungs. And these two effects are important when looking at the interaction, heart-lung interaction. Going again of, on the synchrotron high imaging with the xenon for the ventilation and iodine for the perfusion, I would like to highlight that you uh, already in the normal lung, you have an heterogeneous or ventilation perfusion mismatch. And this is very important to consider. It's very important because what you are doing here when you do cardiopulmonary bypass is that you promote this normal lung heterogeneity. And this is because of the tissue trauma, because of the ischemia, ischemia reperfusion, blood transfusion, the use of hyperoxia during the cardiopulmonary bypass, and also most importantly, due, due to the atelectasis and the loss of lung volume uh, during the uh, cardiac, uh, the, during the surgery. That will lead to increased inflammation, increased oxidative stress, and that will promote uh, the lung heterogeneity and will lead to alteration in lung compliance. So this is what we did in Geneva, an example of what happens actually looking at FRC, what in fact is end expiratory lung volume. And you see that after bypass, you have a significant decrease in uh, end expiratory lung volume, meaning that you have somehow uh, volume loss, lung volume loss, and also here you have the lung clearance index, which is an index of lung heterogeneity with an increase in heterogeneity that happens up to 90 minutes post-operative or post-cardiopulmonary uh, post bypass. And these changes in FRC and lung heterogeneity and lung mechanics differ and do uh, differ uh, uh, from what is preoperative pulmonary hemodynamics. Here you have two groups of patients. You have the group of patients with the trilogy of follow, meaning hypoperfusion in the lung before and after uh, surgery, you have the correction of this uh, 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 loss of uh, pulmonary vasculature. And you have here in uh, white open circles, the uh, VH.